We begin this section by considering lines, rays, and segments that are related to the circle. We assume that the lines and circles are coplanar. Definition. A tangent is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. The point of intersection is the point of contact, or point of tangency. The term tangent also applies to a segment or ray that is part of a tangent line to a circle. In each case, the tangent touches the circle at one point. Definition. A secant is a line or segment or ray that intersects a circle at exactly two points. In figure 6.21a, line S is a secant to circle O. Also, line T is a tangent to circle O, and point C is its point of contact. In figure 6.21b, segment AB is a tangent to circle Q, and point T is its point of tangency. Ray CD is a secant with points of intersection at E and F. Definition. A polygon is inscribed in a circle if its vertices are points on the circle and its sides are chords of the circle. Equivalently, the circle is said to be circumscribed about the polygon. The polygon inscribed in a circle is further described as a cyclic polygon. In figure 6.22, triangle ABC is inscribed in circle O, and quadrilateral RSTV is inscribed in circle Q. Conversely, circle O is circumscribed about triangle ABC, and circle Q is circumscribed about quadrilateral RSTV. Note that segment AB, segment BC, and segment AC are chords of circle O, and that segment RS, segment ST, segment TV, and segment RV are chords of circle Q. Quadrilateral RSTV and triangle ABC are cyclic polygons. Theorem 6.2.1. If a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, the opposite angles are supplementary. Alternative form, the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Definition. A polygon is circumscribed about a circle if all sides of the polygon are line segments tangent to the circle. Also, the circle is said to be inscribed in the polygon. In figure 6.24a, triangle ABC is circumscribed about circle D. In figure 6.24b, square MNPQ is circumscribed about circle T. Furthermore, circle D is inscribed in triangle ABC, and circle T is inscribed in square MNPQ. Note that segment AB, segment AC, and segment BC are tangents to circle D, and that segment MN, segment NP, segment PQ, and segment MQ are tangents to circle T. We know that a central angle has a measure equal to the measure of its intercepted arc, and that an inscribed angle has a measure equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. Now we consider another type of angle in the circle. Theorem 6.2.2. The measure of an angle formed by two chords that intersect within a circle is one-half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. In figure 6.25a, angle 1 intercepts arc DB and angle AEC intercepts arc AC. According to theorem 6.2.2, measure of angle 1 equals one-half the sum of the measure of arc AC plus the measure of arc db. In figure 6.25a, the measure of arc ac equals 84 degrees, and the measure of arc db equals 62 degrees. Find the measure of angle 1. Solution. By theorem 6.2.2, measure of angle 1 equals 1 half the sum of the measure of arc ac plus the measure of arc db. This equals 1 half the sum of 84 degrees plus 62 degrees equals one-half of 146 degrees. Measure of angle 1 equals 73 degrees. Recall that a circle separates points in the plane into three sets. Points in the interior of the circle, points on the circle, and points in the exterior of the circle. In figure 6.26, point A and center O are in the interior of circle O because their distances from center O are less than the length of the radius. 
Point B is on the circle, but points C and D are in the exterior of circle O because their distances from O are greater than the length of the radius. In the proof of theorem 6.2.3, we use the fact that a tangent to a circle cannot contain an interior point of the circle. Theorem 6.2.3 The radius, or any other line through the center of a circle, drawn to a tangent at the point of tangency is perpendicular to the tangent at that point. A consequence of theorem 6.2.3 is corollary 6.2.4, which has three possible cases, illustrated in figure 6.29. Corollary 6.2.4, the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord drawn to the point of tangency is one-half the measure of the intercepted arc. See figure 6.29. A. Case 1. The chord is a diameter. B. Case 2. The diameter is in the exterior of the angle. C. Case 3. The diameter lies in the interior of the angle. Theorem 6.2.5. The measure of an angle formed when two secants intersect at a point outside the circle is one-half the difference of the measures of the two intercepted arcs. Theorems 6.2.5 through 6.2.7 show that any angle formed by two lines that intersect outside a circle has a measure equal to one-half the difference of the measures of the two intercepted arcs. Theorem 6.2.6 .6. If an angle is formed by a secant and a tangent that intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle is one-half the difference of the measures of its intercepted arcs. According to theorem 6.2.6, .6, measure of angle L equals one-half the difference of the measure of arc HJ minus the measure of arc JK in figure 6.33. We must subtract the measure of the smaller arc from the measure of the larger arc. A quick study of the figures that illustrate theorems 6.2.6 .6 and 6.2.7 .6 shows that the smaller arc is nearer the vertex of the angle and that the larger arc is farther from the vertex. Theorem 6.2.7 .6 If an angle is formed by intersecting tangents, then the measure of the angle is one-half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. In figure 6.34a, Angle ABC intercepts the two arcs determined by points A and C. The small arc is minor arc, arc AC, and the large arc is a major arc, arc ADC. According to theorem 6.2.7, .7, the measure of angle ABC equals one-half the difference of the measure of arc ADC minus the measure of arc AC. As always, we subtract the measure of the minor arc from the measure of the major arc. Let's review the methods used to measure the different types of angles related to a circle. These are summarized in Table 6.1. Table 6.1, Methods for Measuring Angles Related to a Circle. Location of the Vertex of the Angle. Rule for Measuring the Angle. Center of the Circle. The Measure of the Intercepted Arc. In the interior of the circle, one-half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs. On the circle, one-half the measure of the intercepted arc. In the exterior of the circle, one-half the difference of the measures of the two intercepted arcs. Theorem 6.2.8 If two parallel lines intersect a circle, the intercepted arcs between these lines are congruent where line AB is parallel to line CD in figure 6.36, it follows that arc AC is congruent to arc BD. Equivalently, the measure of arc AC equals the measure of arc BD.